Hello, hello to everyone today. We're super excited. We have another uh, amazing panel of experts. And today we're going to be talking about wallets, uh, which are a key element on, on the ecosystem. It's sometimes the first thing that uh, users encounter when they get in contact with uh, crypto and blockchain technology. And uh, we as an ecosystem depend on these amazing tools for users to be onboarded. And, and welcome to the ecosystem. So we have three amazing uh, reference in this uh, area today, three great wallets that are growing significantly. And we're going to learn a lot from that experience. And, and hopefully, you're going to be able to tell us where the whole ecosystem of wallets is, is going. So to start, I would like to ask you uh, to do a, a, a quick introduction of yourselves and explain the audience like what what are the main characteristics of your wallet and why your wallet is is special so simon would you like to to start and, and welcome to the panel thank you Gabriel. appreciate it and super super happy to be here uh, and it's good to see uh, bruno and kim as well um yeah so uh, my name is simon lapsher or simon and um, i am the co-founder of liquality uh, and we are a cross-chain liquidity network uh, with a multi-chain wallet and so we released in September uh, the first version of our wallet, uh, September of 2020, uh, which is a Chrome browser extension that allows you to hold multiple tokens on multiple different chains. So you can have Bitcoin, you can have uh, Ethereum and ERC20s, and also you can also have RSK, uh, and we're integrating more. Uh, and basically, the, the biggest differentiation is that we have built-in cross-chain atomic swaps uh, that we uh, standardized and, and created ourselves uh, and so you can do one click uh, exchange between chains uh, and because of that we've also built a transaction automation capability inside the wallet so you can have complex transaction workflows that go between chains uh, in all in, in one click uh, and so that's that's where we are today we've grown significantly uh, since starting in September so we have about 4,000 weekly active users now uh, and uh, have been increasing our growth uh, every, every month since. So, yeah. Well, congratulations. It's, it's super important, uh, these uh, cross-chain swaps that you were mentioning, because this is what makes the, the ecosystem anti-fragile. No? When you connect every single blockchain and just make it super seamless and, and easy to the users. And uh, also uh, happy to see you know, how many projects have been burned, um, I mean, uh, enter into existence or were born uh, from the pandemic, no? Uh, everybody was inside. Uh, it seems that things were not happening. And actually, after a couple of, uh, of months, these amazing projects uh, were born for the ecosystem. Congratulations, Simon. Uh, Kim, you. would you like to tell us uh, something about uh, what makes the Decent Wallet uh, so special? Yeah, sure. Uh, anyway, Simon and Bruno, nice to meet you. Uh, this is a WK. Uh, I am working in Dizen. I'm the vice president at Dizen Biometric Wallet and in charge for the sales and marketing. And this year is our fourth year uh, to join or to participate as a hardware wallet. And I am very proud to inform that, you know, we are the first hardware wallet with a biometric authentication. And that was, I think, probably two or three years ago that we met, you know, Gabriel as well as RSK in Korea. And that was the, so for the beginning of the discussion that we build a partnership. And we are offering three different types of hardware wallet. First one is a biometric, which is our flagship type. And the second one is a car type wallet followed by the app wallet. And we are actively, I would say, selling. And many customers are approaching us because of the biometric as well as the uh, multi-chain support uh, through the one single hardware wallet. And he's very pleased to be part of the panel discussion and very excited. Thank you so much, uh, WK. Something that I still remember that blew my mind when we, when we met several years ago is that, you know, from RSK, we're always pushing to mass adoption and trying to take blockchain technology to those uh, who are less favorite uh, for the traditional legacy system. And all hardware wallets uh, required a computer. 
So you have to have a computer to connect your hardware wallet. And what the, the decent team did was a hardware wallet that interacts with your mobile wallet. So uh, for you know people in Latin America, in Africa, that can connect to, to blockchain technology and with crypto through their mobile phones, uh, they are forced to be uh, with a hot wallet. And, and that's exactly what Decent is tackling. It's enabling uh, hardware wallets with mobile devices. So it was super uh, revolutionary uh, back then, and I'm happy to, to see that you're still leading uh, the innovation on that front. So congratulations, uh, WK. Uh, Bruno, yeah. Bruno, tell us about uh, Defiant. Well, thanks, Gagu. Uh, same, it's a pleasure to, to meet you. Well, to meet you again, Simon, and uh, to get to know you again. And so, yeah, Defiant was born um, in around, well, around in the first quarter of last year. And we were born uh, actually as a peer to peer marketplace. And then we became also a wallet, in part uh, due to a really nice collaboration uh, with uh, RSK. We started, uh, we started having a tighter relationship with this amazing project. Thanks for the invitation, by the way. And so, well, now um, defines a multi-chain, self-custodial mm -hmm. uh, mobile wallet. Uh, it's available for both Android and iOS. And so beyond the multi-chain uh, wallet and the peer-to-peer -peer marketplace, uh, some really interesting features in which we've been working a lot and putting our efforts on are um, good and really comfortable for the user ways of uh, on-ramp or off-ramp, that is to buy and sell crypto with fiat and also also um, the our idea is that the user goes to defiant and uh, installs defiant as their first um, crypto wallet that is we try to be really user friendly we try to to polish all the the rough edges in order for the, the user to have the, the best experience we're growing really nicely and so well, we're really happy with uh, what's happening and uh, being part of the, this great ecosystem. Thank you so much, Bruno. Uh, what you just mentioned is also super important, no? Uh, especially in, in countries such as Argentina or Venezuela, where the, the system is on, on the verge of, of collapse and really peer-to-peer -peer, uh, transactions and on-ramp from the legacy system into crypto are so critical. Uh, so um, it, it's, it's great that you guys are so much focused on this. Uh, this leads to my next question um, that I would like to start with, Simon. Uh, wallets are kind of the ambassadors of the ecosystem, right? Every time we invite new people or someone reads about Bitcoin in the newspaper and they want to get in touch, uh, the first thing that they encounter is the complexity or simplicity of the crypto wallet. So. Uh, what do you guys are the key elements uh, that you uh, take in, into account when when thinking in that user journey, especially for those uh, non-technical users that are new to the space? Yeah, I, I think it's important to know the user really well, uh, and so and and to be able to start with you know the the most you know that we we start with the power users of crypto and then expand onto that as we as our technology allows us to have more and more simplicity. So if, for example, we, you know, our, our wallet just, and you know, it, we launched in September, but we had a cross chain swaps application for more than a year. And that was made for very advanced users that would use their hardware wallet, their ledger. They knew how to, you know, custody the, their, their keys really, really well. Uh, and then we expanded and kind of like abstracted away uh, a lot of that complexity into uh, what is now the liquidity wallet. And, and so I think it comes down to how much complexity can you abstract uh, while also uh, providing enough information and enough education. There's a lot of education involved in bringing in new people uh, and, and trying to, uh, you know, it, it, 
liquidity, for example, all we're, all we're doing is non-custodial. So it, it's really a behavior shift of, you know, all my money's in a bank and it's, 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 it's there versus this is mine and I'm completely responsible for what mm -hmm. happens to this and how do I store a seed phrase, right? So we're still, we're still very early in the non-custodial space. Uh, there are some solutions like smart contract wallets that let, let you do kind of like social recovery. But I think there's there's still kind of like a lot of education needed on what is really the responsibility of something that is non-custodial. What is and, and, and what are the benefits that come from that? And that's why we or I got into this space in the first place. So there's a lot of education. There's a lot of communication. We've had to put a lot of emphasis in kind of like the non happy paths of the wallet so when errors get made how do you communicate those errors to the user uh, so and, and guide them to back towards you know the the, the flow that you want them to uh, there's also of course a lot of support involved so we've had to have uh, you know our support infrastructure uh, to make sure that there's someone available there for a user if they have any questions at all times uh, and so comp you know finding that balance between uh, a lot of information and abstracting away the complexity is is has been really key for us especially as we are a, a very technical project like we came from you know cross chain atomic swaps which are kind of like the, it's it's probably one of the most technical aspects of, of crypto yeah so this is key you know making making the complexity simple for the user uh, wk how this apply uh, to the decent wallet and, and do you see any difference between uh, the users in Korea, in Asia and uh, Latin America and the rest of the world? Because you, you're a project that started in Korea and now it's, it's becoming more global. How do you guys approach this, uh, you know, first interaction with new users? Okay, because uh, luckily that, you know, we are based in Korea, well known as so for the IT advanced country. And I think, you know, the entry barrier for using those kind of mobile-based services is uh, quite low, uh, which is a very good factor for us. But the bottom line is, you know, the main user for our hardware wallet, regardless of whether you have uh, uh, tons of experience and knows lots of services of the blockchain, they are looking for the hardware wallet that makes sure that your asset is privately and securely managed. So... What we are trying to do is the security is the most important area that we cannot compromise. But at the same time, there are very thin line between the security as well as the convenience. And we are trying to offer sort of the very good user experience. For example, if there is a very good services, you know, you can just you know, act or you can have uh, access by just in you know, a few clicks. You can have to. You should not do any kind of so for uh, technical job to get reach or to reach those kind of service. So, uh, I think you know from the hardware wallet perspective, to get more users, you need to offer security as well as a user experience. Perfect. Very very interesting. Yeah. Uh, thanks. How about uh, you, Bruno? How are you, are you serving uh, those new new users coming uh, that? In, in the case of Defiant, you can confirm, but I think many of them, it's the first time that they are uh, having interactions with blockchain and, and, and Bitcoin technology. Yeah, that's true, that's true. A larger, large part of our users are, are really newcomers to the space. So as both WK and Simon said, it's really important to, to give them um, a really, really friendly, and user convenient experience. So that's, of course, one of our focus. And also, also, yeah, having to letting them understand what's happening, being really, really uh, communicative to, to the, the user, that's really important. And that balance uh, between security and usability or convenience that Kim was mentioning is also really important. It's something that you have to bear in mind uh, almost every day. Um, the question is always how, how much do I uh, communicate in terms of all the, the, the technical details? This to the user, how much do I try to not to hide, but to, to put a bit of makeup on it in order for the user to understand it a bit a bit better 
and uh, also it's a task it's a, an everyday task to inform and to um, communicate to the user so we're trying also to build a lot of uh, also we we have to, we have to build the, the support infrastructure to bring people on board to help us um, answering all the questions that may be repetitive sometimes or uh, but but the people newcomers are always having the same kinds of questions also writing blog posts and lots of other uh, tasks that may not be too technical but that at the end of the of the day make uh, the real difference to the user awesome and, and, and also what, of course yeah, go ahead sorry sorry no and also of course having to um, uh, choosing uh, having to choose the um, the features that you're going to to integrate to the product with the the user that you know is your your user persona in mind because as there are I, I guess that we will be speaking forward about this but as there are so many solutions in the ecosystem you have to choose the ones that that, that fit your your users the best in order to to offer offer it to them Absolutely. Yeah, and i would I, I would add that when when bruno you were saying you know right th there's a lot of repeated questions and a lot of um, be, because everybody's coming new I, I think a, a, an important part of that is also having a, a good community uh, and it's something that we have been trying to develop, you know, it's now uh, in liquidity uh, because once you have that buy in from the community, essentially you start seeing that support is also done by community members. And so there's a lot of questions that come up uh, and there's already people that have gone through it. And so the users are helping other users bring them on board. and. You know, it, right now it's it's pretty impressive to see, and I think it, it's going to continue to 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 be that case as we grow the community. Awesome, and and something that I really like is to see these three amazing uh, wallets, uh, where the three of you have tackled a different problem. So Simon's project is more focused on uh, liquidity and and cross chain swaps. Kim is more focused on security and hardware wallet and then Bruno it's more into making it super easy for newcomers and, and, and mass adoption uh, so it's, it's it's great to see how the different wallets uh, complement themselves and that's and, why and I, three three different uh, meth basically form factors as well because Bruno is a mobile app is you know defines it's a mobile app uh, decent is a hardware wallet and then ours is a Chrome extension yeah absolutely uh, so we are in a very unique moment. It's it, the, the market is soaring. We are uh, mm -hmm. days away from our last all-time high, and I'm sure that uh, all your your products are growing exponentially as the rest of the ecosystem is doing. Uh, what kind of signs are you are you seeing from this growth? Is there something that you can share with the audience? Uh, are you seeing more? A growth in number of new users. It's more the funds uh, that every single uh, user is uh, custodian or, or having in, in their wallets. Um, how are you dealing with this with this level of growth, Simon? Do you want to start? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I mentioned this before, but we're you know it, February was our best month uh, yet. So our users, weekly actives, grew by seventy five percent. Uh, which is amazing to see, uh, and our swap volumes uh, grew 100%, uh, and so also in incredible, and, and a, a good part of that actually is coming from the RSK community, uh, because we, you know, it's, it's been such a good fit, and so I think that in every, basically because we are a cross-chain wallet, I think every chain, new chain we enable, we allow a new community to come in and kind of like be a part of the rest of the chains and be kind of like unified. Um, and so we've seen really good growth uh, in both, yeah, in both users and, and volumes. Uh, also that comes with growth in community, that comes with growth in support tickets, <laughs> of course. Um, and uh, we, we don't know if volumes and we know the swap volumes, but we don't know how much volume and, and, um, and essentially funds people hold in their wallets because we are very private focused. Uh, and so we, we actually don't know anything that's going on inside the wallets uh, and we made it a, a, a purposely so. Uh, and so we know that 
uh, people are coming in. We know that they're actively using it, uh, but we don't know what's happening inside other than, you know, we can see this when people are swapping. Uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's, it's been amazing. And I think the, the trajectory uh, will continue for, for, for a good while. Thanks. Very important what you mentioned about uh, not knowing the amount of funds and, and, and privacy concerns. Uh, I can tell you that the feedback from the RSK community towards liquidity, it's amazing. Uh, as you all know, uh, RSK uses Bitcoin as native currency and the connection between the RSK blockchain and the Bitcoin one, uh, you know, if you go through the two-way peg, it's fully technical and, and, and very complex for most users in the world and actually liquidity played a key role in making this uh, cross-chain swap super simple and easy for for users so thanks uh, to the liquidity team for that and, and congratulations uh, Kim uh, are you seeing uh, this uh, kind of exponential growth uh, along with the rest of the ecosystem as well uh, how are you are you dealing with with this uh, amount of growth uh, yes so I'm really really hoping that you know, uh, rest of the whole year is gonna be like you know February as a March time frame because uh, thanks for the all the price for the Ethereum, Bitcoin, and other altcoin, and the market is really getting hard. And I can say that you know the majority of the Korean customer, uh, when they need it, hardware wallet, the first wallet that they think about is a decent wallet because. Uh, the, my competitor, the French company, cannot support any local language. So that was another big plus. And what we learned from the local market is you need to have a very good partnership with a key platform player. Because we do have a platform giant called KakaoTalk, and they launch the uh, cryptocurrency as well as a blockchain services. And we were the first hardware wallet that integrate those uh, blockchain network and i am really looking forward to build uh, those kind of success story in the other region especially for the latin america as well as uh, south america because through the rsk and that's why you know we are closely uh, i would say communicating and we are actively uh, willing to put more extra step to support whatever the service that you are required and coming back to the our reality uh, we could say that uh, MAU as well as a DAU has been triple uh, compared with the last year, same time frame. So it is really good month and hoping that you know this will uh, last until a uh, few months or a few years. <laughs> Absol absolutely, absolutely. And also something that happens every time uh, you know the crypto space uh, source in price is that people get concerned about security. So. Yep. You know, uh, getting into hard wallets is, is, is a great practice that we encourage everyone from the audience to to uh, use to protect their their funds. Uh, Bruno, can you tell us about uh, the, the growth in recent months in in Defiant? Sure. Yeah. Since actually, since we launched last year, we've been seeing growth in our in our user count uh, monthly and constantly. So those that's uh, we're all uh, just like almost used to it, you know. It never it never surprises us, but it's really it's something that's really really good, you know. Like every time we, we think about it, it's like yeah, we're having more and more users every every week and every month, and so yeah, that in that department we're really really safe. Um, about us, yeah, all this this growth uh, in user awareness. And also, I think that having to do with the price of the of, of Bitcoin and ETH, and Ether, and we're receiving also more. We're perceiving more people uh, interested in also in investing in us. We we announced some time ago that we were conducting our our press uh, round, and also we are already starting to think about a Series A. And so, yeah, we're seeing. A lot of growth in in many from many many sites. Let's say also, of course, uh, other projects that approach us in terms of uh, with with um, like with the perspective of uh, of um, uh, doing some kind of, of connection uh, with Defiant for offering their 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 services or their dApps or their platforms. 
So that's also a good sign. And uh, yeah, we're also about to launch uh, on and off ramp services for uh, some more particular Latin American countries and also a solution for, for for all the globe, so we expect to be seeing more and more new users in the uh, in the coming weeks and months. Also, awesome, awesome! So happy for the three of you guys. Um, now there is a level of innovation and new products and solutions happening. You know, there is a DeFi uh, platform, then it's NFTs, and you know, there, there's a lot of hype around that. But the technology behind. Um, you know that hype it's quite interesting so how are you coping with the rate of innovation in the space and and how do you decide uh which technology is mature enough to be integrated into your wallet simon uh how do you deal with this that's the hardest part of all of this i think is prioritization and and in general in building a product i think that's the always the hardest part is you can you have the whole world and and special you know and, and what do you choose to build or not to build or integrate or not to integrate um, and so for us i think it's a combination of you know we've been as a team in this space since 2017 so the wallet's new but the team has been in the space since 2017 so we have a good grasp of how to determine what is mature and what isn't and how to determine real usage and the the good you know the the good thing about blockchain is that everything's transparent uh, and so you can really see what has traction and what doesn't right there, there's no hiding there you, you can't lie about you know how much on-chain volume some some protocol is doing uh, and so it's a for us it's a combination of our understanding with on-chain metrics and trying to figure out where the traction for different things are and different chains uh, and as well as where our users are asking us to be and so we have a, a re really good connection and communication with our user base, uh, and we have you know we prioritize features based on their uh, demand. And so and so I, I you know I think it's impossible to keep up with the innovation, but uh, basically we have a niche of cross-chain trustless uh, applications, right? So basically we do cross-chain really well, and we do. In the the exchange between those chains trustlessly really well and so that's our that's basically where we found our success and i think if we continue to grow from that and from that outwards uh, then we'll continue to do that as well as kind of like prior figuring out which chains to prioritize and that 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 in itself is is tricky because you know there there's a lot of because every blockchain has their own community and some communities are louder than others. Sometimes it's a it, it is hard to you know distinguish between the the noise and the signal. Uh, and so talking to those chain teams, understanding what is uh, you know me meeting with them and their technical team to understand what is ready, what is not, how 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 real is their infrastructure, how many projects do they have on mainnet, uh, and yeah. And so that, that's more or less, it's, it's a balance of many different things and, and trying to grow from what we know we do well. Thanks, Simon. WK, how do you deal with, with this amount of innovation and, and hype and how do you differentiate and know what to integrate into, into this end? Uh, because I am looking at from the two different perspectives because first one is, I mean, this, this, is, this is hardware wallet support the multi-chains. So, it is a very challenging for us to monitor market and collect the market feedback. So what we are doing is based on what we have, you know, our customers are asking to support certain services or certain blockchain. And that is the first input that we are getting from our market based on what we are doing or what from our customer. And at the same time, you know, we have to engage with the new player because this one has to be listed as a, one of the few or first hardware wallet to support certain services as well as a certain blockchain. And what we are trying to do is trying to build the relationship with the blockchain, uh, so-called the leader, including the RSK. And we are getting the recommendation from those blockchain player and trying to reflect it and into our services as well as the market. So that is the uh, one of the, I would say, effective way 
to bring out the solution to the market with short time frame. Very interesting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Bruno? Well, yeah, as Simon said, it's it's probably the, the, the hardest part to prioritize um, the features we integrate into, into our product. And uh, in our particular case, we we've got um, we've got plenty of users, uh, mainly the users that have been using Defiant since the, the early stages that are not really newcomers. So probably when you hear what they want, they'll tell you a bit more advanced features, uh, which we also try to integrate. But we know and we've decided they have decided, and it's our view. Uh, I told you before that we're trying to, we're trying to, for the we're trying to make the crypto space uh, really really accessible. So we are always trying, of course, to, to make everyone happy. So we may be integrating some more advanced features, but we're always trying to give a special eye and special attention to all the solutions that make the life easier for the user to get on board, to get on the crypto space, uh, and to really find a really interesting and useful use uh, for that, for their crypto. So, so that's what drives us uh, along the path. And also, likely for us, for instance, we've uh, integrated um, in a particular case uh, Wallet Connect, which pretty much solves um, the connection between the, the mobile wallet and all the universe of dApps that are out there. Because, for instance, for the, the users of Defiant may uh, know that they're already used to to connect and and use uh, money chain platform through Defiant, which is natively integrated. Um, so it's a really really nice experience to use money on chain <coughs> Defiant. Sorry, and but we cannot do that with every DApp or platform that appears in the DeFi world because we know that every every week has its own uh, main character and new player, you know? So with Wallet Connect, we've pretty much solved that part. You can, with Defiant, you can interact with plenty, plenty of, of uh, dApps. And uh, well, about the, the integrations that are really integrated into Defiant, uh, trying to do, to do it every time more usable and easier for our user. Yeah, it's a, it's a very thin line. No, we, we would like to add as much technology as we can, but also we would want to keep it very simple for the users. So it's, it's a thin, a thin balance. Uh, can can I add something there? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and I, I think we've started to make that shift uh, between, so I think for, for a mobile wallet, it makes sense to have Wallet Connect integrated so that you can I interact with dApps. Uh, for us, which we are a browser, you know, browser extension, essentially, what we are starting to do is we're starting to come up with an integration framework. Uh, so kind of like a plugin mechanism uh, so that everybody can build their own plugin uh, and, and integrate it into the wallet. Uh, and so allowing kind of like developers to, to come into Liquality and develop their own transaction workflows for their own dApps if they want to and, and, and have that integrated into the wallet. And we're also doing that with, with chain teams, right? So new, new blockchains, some of, some of the teams, like some of the work we're doing ourselves to integrate new blockchains. Uh, but for example, the RSK integration was driven by the RSK team who approached us and we worked together to, to do that. And so automating that experience so that we don't really have to be a part of it, uh, it kind of like removes the limit from what we can do uh, and it puts the limit on how many developers can we bring to build on top of uh, on top of liquidity and and have the have our, our users choose which are the the plugins and the integrations that they like more essentially absolutely and, and and you know what the 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 chrome extension could be quite interesting to be integrated into taringa you know that that we have uh, 12 million active users in the Taringa community that now they are getting into 
into blockchain technology through the wow. Taringa crypto e economy and, and the Reef uh, services. And it would be great because when you're navigating a website through a, a Chrome plugin uh, that it has blockchain technology enabled as a wallet, uh, that's, that's, you know, the user using just navigating the internet, but with like superpowers. So um, that, that would be something interesting to explore. Uh, now, there's another major issue problem that we are seeing across the space, especially on, on the Ethereum ecosystem, which is the, the, the high fees. Now, many uh, use cases and many users that have been, uh, especially in Latin America and Africa, using uh, stable coins for their daily payments, now cannot deal or use this technology anymore uh, because of the Ethereum fees. And that's actually creating a lot of opportunity for other blockchains or solutions that are cheaper. But uh, on, in, in terms of wallets, it seems to be two different kinds of wallets. You know, you have the on-chain wallets and the off-chain wallets. Those who deal with, uh, you know, Lumino or Lightning Network and those who are fully on-chain. Uh, do you see a trend of everything getting blended in where uh, are your wallets planning to integrate off-chain solutions? Do you expect the other off-chain wallets to also uh, become more active in the on-chain space? How do you see this trend going forward, Simon? Do you want to start? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I mean, it's a real problem. Fees are killing the, the usability for non, you know, we call them whales, right? The people who have a, a lot of money and can spend, you know, a hundred dollars on a, on a smart contract transaction, but everybody else is left out of the game. And um, so we do see a lot of dApps and projects going to layer two, and there is a fragmentation of different layer two solutions. And, and, and so, um, yeah, I mean, I, I so what, what we do at Liquality is we built everything, uh, on what's called the chain abstraction layer. So it's essentially it's a plug and play open source protocol where if you know you you basically build integration into one chain and that all because it's built into that protocol it can talk to all of the other chains. And so we will treat uh, layer 2s as w a, a, another chain essentially because that's what they are either they're side chains or they're rollups but essentially they act as their own ecosystem that requires on and off boarding uh, and so we will provide you know all of basically sl slowly but surely right we, we will prioritize the ones that the market seems to be adopting uh, and allow for layer one to layer two uh, on and off boarding, but also layer two to layer two directly. So I think it's 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 really you know as as wallets we are kind of like the I think you said right the ambassadors we are the 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 gateway to the ecosystem. So it, it's almost like it's it's not our uh, our job to choose. It's more our option our, our job to give optionality to the users and and let them go wherever they want to go. Uh, and so that that's how I see it, and 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 it's our job to make it to make that because that that in itself is very complicated to make that as simple as possible. So basically, not knowing our, 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 you know our vision for for liquidity is, is that the user shouldn't know which chain you're interacting with. You should you should only know that you know you're you're do going to this app to use you know use it for a very specific reason and so we hide all of that complexity we might do like a cross chain transaction or cross chain swap behind the scenes so to get you onboarded into that layer 2 uh, which is a different layer layer 2 than this other application that you're using and it's our job to hide away all of that complexity as much as possible Absolutely, hiding the complexity is, is the holy the holy grail. No, uh, that's why on 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 Reef we launched enveloping, so users can mm -hmm. also pay on chain fees directly with the token they are dealing with, uh, trying yeah. to, to make this as seamless as possible. Uh, WK, uh, does off chain uh, payments make sense for a hardware wallet, or you guys are more focused on high volume? Uh, you know, large transactions and, and your users do not care that much about high fees. How are you approaching this? I mean, surprisingly, you know, whether how much asset that you are holding at a certain wallet, you know, they are extremely sensitive about the gas fee. 
when they <laughs> make any transaction. And based on this, you know, I think, you know, this is a, the hurdle that, you know, the Ethereum uh, Foundation has to come over because uh, this could let us, you know, the other so-called the chain uh, introduce uh, those kind of, I would say, DeFi services with the low gas fee. And as you know that, you know, the Binance Smart Chain is one of the hardest so-called the chain for the DeFi industry. And what we believe is, you know, you, I mean, Bitcoin as well as RSK has a potential to be like, you know, one of the uh, leading player if the gas fee issue is solved. And to answer your question between the off-chain as well as the on-chain, for me, it's quite hard for me to decide or choose that which wallet is going to lead the whole industry. But, you know, I do have a very strong confidence that, each blockchain user will have a hardware wallet or the software wallet to use the services. And I like to see that, you know, which portion is, is leading the whole industry. But for me, it's a bit early to decide that, you know, off-chain or on-chain, which one is better. Okay, perfect. Bruno, do you have any plans to integrate any off-chain technologies into Defiant? Yeah, sure. Of course, our users, which are not, most of them are not whales, as Simon said. Um, we, they are really, really concerned about, about the fees. And so, of course, we will integrate all the possible and um, the most mature solutions and put them available for them. And, of course, we'll try to, to hide all the, the complexities, let's say. Um, I think that we we will be um, lucky enough, I think, as a as a community, to have some some standards that are that are already being developed in order to to make it um, very 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 feasible this integration and hiding all the the, the the complexities and making it possible for the user to. To be able to connect to to many solutions that are already being being developed and also that are already available out there, and but of course uh, I'd say that we will probably choose as we believe ourselves to be an opinionated uh, wallet. We will probably choose to offer some of them like more transparently to the user and. Uh, just up to the point that in which they will probably not know that they're using a layer two or off-chain solution, I'd say. But yeah, for sure. In order to, I mean, like, in order to to answer the question, we will we will try to solve the fees problem to the users by some of this using some of these technologies. Sure. Perfect. Thanks. Okay, we're we're uh, arriving towards the end of the uh, of the panel. I would like to to ask you uh, the final uh, question. Uh, you guys are in the forefront of this industry, so probably you have more insight uh, than anybody else about where where are we going as an industry, as an ecosystem. So let's think, uh, you know, twelve months from now. So in one year, what do you think? are going to be the, the trends. And I know it's very difficult, right? But just based on, on the information that you have, would things you think are, are starting to grow and, and you expect to grow significantly in the next year? Would things you believe are, uh, you know, with too much hype now and, and you, you expect to fade away? Uh, and also, you know, what do you think uh, Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrencies will, will Effect and what role they will have in the world in, in, in a year now that everything seems to be moving so fast. Uh, Simon, any, any thoughts on, on, on the short term future of this industry? Yeah, I, I think that the, the main one is the expansion of, of cross chains of, of a multi chain world. I, I really do. And, and you know, we've been at this like i said since 2018 thinking cross chain and now it's it's when we're really starting to to see it come to life and with the uh, you know with polkadot and cosmos going on mainnet i think though that that will 
trigger just a boom in in really the cross chain interoperability. Uh, and so whoever really nails that experience for the user of you know not not really caring that the user doesn't really care um, where you know what which chain they're interacting with they just want to use the products and have use superior products uh, that you know they that that wallet will win a significant amount of users I think that layer twos are finally going to start being real and so the majority of the usage is actually probably by you know i i would I, I don't know if a year from now but probably one to two uh the majority of the usage is going to happen at layer two cheap transactions uh, and and in the background at dApps will kind of like be settling to layer ones uh, i think that's mostly true for dApps uh, for bitcoin i think it's a it's interesting because bitcoin layer ones actually solves a, ve a, a very specific problem, which is, you know, a, a store of value and, and settlement mechanism. And so I don't think that changes to layer two. I think there will be use cases for layer two for uh, RSK, for lightning of, of different usages, like, you know, fi finance applications being built on top of that. But the layer one Bitcoin actually serves a really good use case and high fees are not that important when you're doing store of value. Uh, and so, and so Especially I think that when the central banks start using it, that's when the fees are going to go up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't think that's going to happen within a year <laughs> or, or at least not, not in a mainstream way. I think, you know, I, I, I think with anything like we're, we're living inside a, a multi-generational change uh, and a year is, is too small of a time frame to really think about how these things change. And, and yeah, I mean, I, within the past year, we saw a lot of, a lot more adoption of mainstreams of corporate treasuries buying Bitcoin, you know, Elon, Elon Musk buying Bitcoin for, uh, for Tesla. And, and it's impressive, but it's, it, it's never, it, 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 there, there's no such thing as like immediate hyper Bitcoinization, right? It's a, it's a process that, that takes time. And, and, and I think the more we can, again, go towards faster, secure, simpler uh, usability applications that abstract away the complexity, I think the more we'll, we'll get there. It's, but it's a, it's a process. We're here for, for the long term. Thank you, Simon. And just uh, a final comment. Where can people download uh, liquidity and how can they uh, experiment it? Yeah, yeah. Go to liquidity.io. Um, that's our, our, our website. You can download the wallet from there, a Chrome extension. You can also join our Telegram community uh, and, and ask any questions uh, and reach out to me as well directly if you, if you have any questions. I'm here. Thank you, Simon. Uh, WK, where do you see the, the ecosystem in a year? Uh, what trends? are you most excited about? OK, uh, I am very optimistic about the ecosystem as well as the blockchain industry. And OK, when it comes with the so for the price, of course, you know, definitely it will go up. Uh, and I think you know, that is going to be a very good factor. But uh, at the same time, we, you know, we need to have a more customer. We need to have a more uh, market input. And to do that, you know, we need to have uh, some kind of killer application uh, which they can give a fund to for newcomers. And the one of the things that we are looking at is uh, NFT. And I think you know this is going to be one of the hardest topics throughout the whole year. And at the same time, probably uh, the metaverse is going to be another good application where we can bring you know new users into the blockchain industry because that is the area that they can use or they can utilize the cryptocurrency as well as NFT as well. So it's going to be quite exciting here, and I'm really ready for that. Awesome. And how can uh, people uh, get in touch, buy the hardware wallet for Decent? Is it uh, online? Uh, can they download the, the wallet even if they do not have the hardware wallet as well? Uh, yes, uh, they can just you know download the Decent mobile app uh, through the Google Play as well as iPhone, which is a free of charge. And they can purchase in you know, a hardware wallet through the various store in Amazon, including the, our own online mode, which is decentwallet.com. And you can just you know drop us any question, just you know clicking the simple uh, green button on the bottom of the screen. Perfect. Thank you so much.